What's going on guys? Welcome into episode number 20 of the Ask Tony Show. Thank you so much for joining me. It is May. Finally, it is May. Um, it seems like April took 17 years to get through. March took even longer. But we're finally into May and we hope some of the you know, social distancing, quarantine things can kind of start to ease away. Life can start to get back to normal. So we're excited about that. Um, and we have some great questions today. So let's get started. My neighbor built a fence on my property. What can I do? So if your neighbor built their fence on your property, the first thing you should do is go talk to them. Um, I've, I've had a ton of cases where people, they build fences and they don't really know where the boundary lines are. They should know, um, but they just don't. And in many cases they do it uh, without bad intentions. They just kind of build it and it just happens to be on, on, on your property. So I would go talk to them, let them know, say, hey, your, the fence that you just built, it's on my property. Maybe show them your map or whatever it is that you have. And then, you know, many people are nice. The majority of people are nice I've seen and they'll move it, especially if it's on your property. Most people are smart and they know that if they put their fence on your property, then it's not supposed to be there and they're gonna to have to move it anyway. So most people are gonna be reasonable with you, but if they're not, then you can go to the city um, and you know talk to the city, have them force them to move it back. When somebody puts, the, whether it's a fence or a shed or whatever it is on your property, it's called an encroachment. Um, so if there's an encroachment that's now on your property, you can report that uh, to the county, to the city, and then have, whether it's the police department or the city, come over, check it out, and then force your neighbor to move it if they don't want to move it. That probably wouldn't be the first thing that I would do. I would talk to them first uh, and see if they're willing to move it willingly. But if not, you can always go the encroachment route uh, and have the city force them to put the fence where it's supposed to be. I was thinking about getting a big real estate ad in the mall. Good idea? So when it comes to advertising, guys, the, things that, the, the, the thing that I always recommend is you gotta test things. You gotta try it out, see how it works, uh, because a lot of ideas, it, when you first get the idea, it might not seem that great, or it might seem like it's not gonna work, and then it does end up working. So um, I would always say, if you have an idea and you have the budget for it, test it. Now, when it comes to ads in the mall or, or, or anywhere else, it really comes down to two things. It comes down to cost and it comes down to uh, the traffic. So you have to think about where is the mall placed? Where is the ad within the mall? Is it a place that has a lot of traffic? Is it in the food court? Is it in a corner where not really a lot of people tend to go to? Where is it placed? And then the next step is how much does it cost and can you afford it? Now, if you can afford it, what I would do is I would set a certain test period three months, four months, you know, whatever it is, or maybe even less, one to two months, to see what happens. Um, and then put your ad up. Now the ad has to be good. If the ad sucks, then it doesn't matter where you put it, it's not gonna work. So you have to keep those two things in mind. If you put up an ad and it doesn't work, but there's traffic, then it might be because the ad isn't so great. If you put up an ad and the ad is good and there's no traffic, then that's gonna be your issue and your ad is, it, it's not properly placed. But a lot of people, they, they just kind of shun from you know, certain things or they say, I don't wanna do that, I don't, I don't, I don't do this, I don't do that. Uh, in my opinion, the best thing you can do is test it out. Uh, you never know, that ad might bring you, you know, two, three, four customers and if that ad is gonna cost you, what, $1,000 a month and you can get one lead a month, you know, if you talk about real estate, uh, which is which is my business. Every customer, if they if they close, that can be you know ten to twenty thousand dollars in commission. So if that's the case, and if I can get one customer per month from a mall ad that costs me a thousand dollars a month, then that's a great investment. So you also have to check out the the cost benefit for your specific business. But the short answer that I would say is say yes if you can afford it, and test it, and be smart. I saw that you are a NAREP president. What is NAREP? So NAREP stands for the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. I'll put it down here somewhere. National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. So basically it's an organization 
um, that is catered to the Hispanic community, uh, from Hispanic loan officers, Hispanic agents, trying to give resources to the Hispanic community, Hispanic homeowners. Um, the goal is to increase uh, home ownership within the Latino community. Uh, we know that Latinos are a big chunk of the population. Uh, they have tremendous buying power. And so we're really trying to reach out to all of the uh, Hispanics in our area, try to get them to learn a little bit more about home ownership, the pros, the cons, how the system works, how they can qualify for a mortgage and connect them to Hispanic real estate professionals, agents, brokers, title officers, escrow, you know, just the whole, the whole gamut of real estate people that you're gonna need to be successful. So what, what we found is there are a lot of Hispanics that wanna buy a property or that they would like to get involved, but they don't speak English, for example, and they don't know a lot of Spanish speaking people that they can go to. So NAREP really is um, twofold. Number one, to provide resources for the community at large to be able to be more educated about the process. And number two, to be a networking platform, I feel, so that me as a Hispanic real estate broker, I can have connections that speak Spanish, whether in lending, in title, inspections, whatever it may be, and that those people can help cater to my Hispanic clients so that the overall experience is better. So um, I'm really blessed to be a part of that organization. I think it's fantastic. I love the work that they do. Um, and just excited to be along for the ride. Thank you.